Hey, good evening. Hope you're doing well. I felt led um, to come on tonight, and um, I just want to teach quickly on on prayer, on on the persistence of um, or the necessity to be persistent in prayer. Um, so I hope you're all doing well. Um, you know, many times I think that. Um, we pray, a lot of us pray, even unbelievers pray, everybody prays, everybody's prayed at some stage in their lives. But sometimes we have to, to examine our prayer life and we need to question whether we've been persistent with prayer. And I've learned in my own life that what God requires is persistence in prayer. And what persistence really means is, is, is doing something continually, doing something all throughout the day doing something every single day until you, you, you get a good result. And usually, if we don't get the result straight away, the temptation might be for us to give up prematurely before we've got that result. But what God wants us to do is to continue, to, to continue pressing in, to continue praying. And you see, the scripture has many references about the need to be persistent. Um, so I just want to go through some of the scriptures tonight, um, just um, outline um, some of the examples that are in, in the scriptures and therefore give us an indication of what we need to do in order to get the results that we want. Because when we're praying, obviously we, we pray because we want a result. We're praying to God, uh, we're requesting something from God and we want him to give us uh, whatever we've been asking for. And... Um, yeah, that's why I pray. I pray because I want God to give me to give me something that I I want desirable, and um, yeah, that's that's why we're on this earth. We're on this earth uh, to to gain things. You see, in in Jesus's life, Jesus Christ needed things. Jesus Christ needed disciples, and it says that um, after he started his ministry, he went to a mountain and he prayed all night and. Uh, the answer was given to him. God told him, the disciples, he, who he should choose. He chose 12 disciples and he got a clear answer. But even Jesus had to be persistent. Or if there was any time that Jesus Christ performed the miracle, you see that often he would go to the wilderness to be alone and he would be praying there all night <clears throat> until he received the power. So Jesus Christ showed persistence in his prayer life. So therefore, we need to show persistence as well in our in our prayer life. It's, it's not um, a case of us just praying once and then expecting um, expecting results immediately. Because even even Jesus said, he said, keep knocking, keep knocking, keep knocking on the door. And then eventually the door will be opened onto you. He said, every man that asks receives and everybody that seeks is able to, to receive. So what God wants us to do is to offer that that persistence. We can't give in. It's, 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 for me, it's a principle that is important in every area of your life. It's a principle that leads to success in any area of your life. And, and again, it's persistence. You don't give up the first go. Sometimes things are not going to work out for you the first go, but you keep going, you keep going. And why do you keep going? Because you have faith that eventually that you're going to get a de desirable result. And remember, that's that's the currency in heaven. The currency in heaven is faith. That's what moves God from his throne. That's what 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 calls God to send forth his angels to come and, and to give you the fulfillment of, it, of all the desires that you've been asking for. And to be honest, the scripture makes it clear that God is in the business of giving us the desires of our heart. He said, delight yourself. Psalm 34 said, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So this is, this is God's intention. But what, before God can give us what we want, before God can give us what we need, we have to do some things as well. That's why even Christ said, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then things will be added unto you. So when we seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, it's not something that we just do on a Sunday, but it's actually something that God wants us to do regularly and throughout the day. And what that might mean practically is that we set forth specific times during the day where we seek God, where we pray to God. Or what that might even mean is, is to even obey the words of Paul and to pray continuously, to pray ceaselessly throughout throughout the time, throughout the day, praying ceaselessly 
And then when you do that, that's when you're going to start to get those results that you're looking for. Because again, I say we only pray because we want results. We don't pray just for the sake of it. Praying can certainly be enjoyable once you get involved in it. But the reason why we, we ultimately pray is because we want to gain results. And God wants to give us those results. But what he's trying to see is, are, are we persistent? Are we patient? He's trying to really test us to see whether we really believe. It's so easy for us to say we believe today, especially when things are comfortable, when things are going on okay in our lives but do we believe even when we're in the pit do we believe when we're even close to the grave do we believe when there's calamity when there's all types of trials and tribulations all around us will we still believe then that is what god is gonna is trying to ask us and that's why what, what god is trying to see if we really believe because like i said god only moves with faith we need to have faith in him we need to have faith in his goodness we have to have faith in what and who he said he is and the way that we we reflect that faith is through prayer you know, through prayer. So I've got a few um, scriptures I want to go through tonight. Um, you know, starting from Acts chapter 10. If we go to Acts chapter 10, this is a story about Cornelius. I'm reading from verses 1. It says, There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band. Now, Cornelius is a Gentile man. He's not from the, the tribes of Israel. However, it says that he was a devout man, one that feared God with all of his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming to him and saying unto him, Cornelius. So when we pray, that's what happens is we, we receive visitations. When we pray, angels are drawn to us. Can you remember the story in Daniel? I believe it's in Daniel chapter 10 where it said that he'd been fasting and he was praying for 21 days. And then finally, when he finished the fast on the 21st day, it said that an angel had been dispatched by the Lord to him. And this angel gave him some revelation about some of the things that Daniel was seeking. He wanted to know when the children of Israel were going to be released from their captivity and um, basically that angel revealed that there was a principality, you know, namely the prince of Persia that withstood him uh, in the air. So what, what that was just basically indicating and showing us is that when we pray, then what happens is God sends angels to us and angels are, are called messengers. Another word for an angel is, is a messenger. That's what an angel means, a messenger. So when we're praying, these spirits come from God, these good spirits that are under the feet of Jesus, they come to us and then they give us specific strategies. They give us specific revelation, uh, prophetic utterances. They give us information, spiritual information, which is needed for the assignment that God has given us. And that, that's exactly what happened here um, with Cornelius. He said that, and when he looked on him, <clears throat> he was afraid and said, what is it, Lord? This is when he saw the angel. And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. So because of Cornelius's prayers, he said that he prayed always, this didn't go unrecognized in the sight of God. But the angel actually said that this man was so diligent in his prayers that God had taken notice of it. He'd written it down almost as a memorial and he then sent an angel to come down to appear to him and to reward him. And Cornelius is known, uh, according to the book of Acts, to be that first Gentile in the new covenant who received good word from, from Peter, the apostle, and who received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. He was immersed by the baptism of the Holy Ghost, even as Peter came to him and uh, preached the gospel to him, told him about Jesus. This man got filled with the Holy Ghost and started to speak in different tongues and he, he got saved. He was baptized in the water. And this is a clear indication that when we are praying always, not only will we get angelic visitations, but we're also going to get rewarded as well. Now, God could have chosen any other Gentile. There were loads and loads of unbe unbelieving Gentiles or people that didn't even know about Jesus Christ in that day. But the reason why God chose Cornelius is because Cornelius was praying always and giving alms always. He was giving money, um, giving money to the poor. But 
the difference between Cornelius and perhaps other people is that Cornelius was diligent. Uh, Cornelius gave alms always. Cornelius uh, prayed always. And that's what God, what, what pleases God. You know, I'm a teacher. And what I like to see as a teacher, I don't really like to see students that do well one week, next week that, hey, good evening. Hope you're doing well. God bless you. God bless you, Rebecca. Yeah, I, I don't really like seeing students that do well one week, next week they're misfiring, next week they get zero. I want to see students that are doing well every week. I want to see persistence and consistency. And that's what God likes as well. Because really, it's only consistency and persistence which draws true results. It's like us going to the gym. If we go to the gym just once in a month, and then we're not going to see any results. But if we're persistent, it doesn't matter how small we are in the beginning. If we go to the gym every single day, within a week, within two weeks, within a month, we're going to see notable changes. We're going to see notable differences. And that's how it's like in the kingdom of God. That's how it's like when we're praying. By the way, um, good evening, Rebecca, but this is about being persistent in prayer. Uh, this is about praying always. I just shared a message about um, or shared a message or a story about Cornelius, about how Cornelius prayed always. And because how he prayed always, God sent him an angel and an angel came and gave him a message and told him to meet up with Peter and how that draws parallels between uh, the story of, of Daniel, how Daniel prayed and fasted consistently and persistently for 21 days and how an angel had been dispatched to him by God who gave him a revelation. So when we're praying, we need to, we need to be persistent and it doesn't matter if we don't get results today. It doesn't matter if we don't get them tomorrow. If we're persistent, I can assure you that we're definitely going to get results. You know, um, in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6, uh, talking about Abraham. I mean, Abraham is a, is a perfect example of somebody who uh, demonstrated persistence in his prayer life. Um, It says, for God is not unrighteous to forget your, your work and your labor of love. Amen. 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 I mean, with Abraham, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm just trying to find the scripture of Abraham. Okay, so, sorry, Hebrews 6, verses 15. This is talking about Abraham. It says, and so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So, um, putting this into perspective, I think this is talking about how Abraham had received the promise from God. And that, that promise was that, uh, I remember in Genesis chapter 15, that God was going to, was going to bless his seed. And that he was going to have ch as many children as, as the stars in, in the sky. And Abraham received that promise when he was over 75. And it said that here, Hebrews 6.15, it said, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. So in the midst of all of that, he received the promise or he received the, uh, the commandment from the Lord when he was 75. That's when God told him to leave the land of Mesopotamia and to go into the promised land, to go into Canaan. And he gave him all of those promises. He said that I will bless your seed. In your seed, all of the nations of the earth will be blessed. He said, I'll bless those who bless you. I'll curse those who curse you and so on and so forth. So he received those promises when he was 75. But we find that Abraham had to wait a further additional 25 years until that promise had finally been fulfilled in his life. And it seemed very improbable, but God still eventually answered him. And that's the great thing about God. You know what God, all God wants his children to have is faith. All he wants us to do is have faith. But it's no good just praying once. Because if you pray once, I'm telling you, if you just pray once and you leave it that way, eventually you're going to lose faith. But if you pray and you keep praying, keep praying, keep praying about that particular point, write down your particular points that you want. Write them down. Write it down. There may only be two. If they're two, then you don't need to write them down. You, you will know them. But keep praying them. Pray them in the morning. Pray them in the afternoon. Pray them all throughout the day. 
And don't think, you know, the devil's going to try and come and condemn you. The devil's going to try and tell you, oh, but, you know, Jesus Christ said that do not use vain repetitions like the heathen do because the heathen think that they're going to be they're going to be much heard through their much prayers. He's going to come and say that, God, you know, you're being selfish. You just keep praying for yourself. But that's not the way that God works. Remember, we are his children. The Bible says that if a child goes to his father and asks his father for bread, will the father give him a stone? Or if he went to go and ask his father for a, a, a fish, will he give him a serpent? He wouldn't. He said, you, you, you guys on earth are evil, so how much would your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit? Yes, the Holy Spirit, but other things as well. There are other things that God wants to give you. He's a good father, but what God needs is faith. God didn't have to give Abraham a child. That's the thing, even when God visited Abraham and told him, oh, by this time next year, you're going to have that son, um, Isaac, from Sarah. He said, it's fine, you've already given me Ishmael, you don't need to bother yourself. But God still gave Abraham a son because God knew what Abraham wanted. And it's the same with us. When God knows what we want, God will give it to us. But what he needs is persistence because, again, persistence proves faith. It proves faith. So if you, if you go to Matthew chapter 7, we see what Jesus Christ says about persistence. Jesus, Jesus encourages persistence. Um, Matthew 7 from verse 7 says, Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks receives. And he that seeks finds and to him that knocks it shall be opened now when we're when knocking we might knock on a door nobody opens the door so what do we do we keep knocking we keep knocking somebody's still not hearing maybe they're asleep we keep knocking eventually we knock harder and we're persistent with that knocking and then what happens eventually somebody hears the knock and then goes down and opens the door and that's how it's like with God now I think we need to put it into perspective God is seated on a throne in heaven now remember we have three heavens there's the first heaven we're on the first heaven the second heaven is the, where the stars are where the sun is situated where the moon is and then the third heaven is above that and that's where where Jesus is right now Jesus is in the third heaven now we need to look think of this into perspective and think how many things are going on before God at this very moment? There's millions of things that are going on right before him. He's situated in a, in, a, in, a, in a place. I mean, I understand that God can see everything. He's omnipresent in a way. You know, he's omniscient. He can see everything. But he's also, he's also situated in, in, a, in, in heaven. And it says that Jesus is on his right hand. So for us to, I really believe for us to get his attention, we have to be persistent. Remember, um, what's her name? Uh, we can go to it, but remember Hannah, that's another good example. Hannah, she'd been going to Shiloh. So Shiloh, I believe, was where they would, where they put the tabernacle. Remember Moses' tabernacle that he constructed at this time in the era of the judges. Um, Samuel was actually the last judge. Um, they had to go to the tabernacle in Shiloh and that's where they would uh, perform all of their religious duties, especially on the day of Passover and the day of atonement. Um, and they would go there every every year um, basically Hannah and Hannah was um, married to a, a leave or a man of the tribe of Ephraim and that man also had another wife but Hannah was barren but it said that Hannah would go every single year and she would cry to the Lord and eventually it came a time where she just let it all out she cried with with rage she cried and, and cried out to, with, to God you know with holy desperation with persistence and you know what God eventually answered her that's what happens when we're persistent. We eventually get the attention of God because God, God can hear us, but God is busy. And I know God has, God can do everything. He's got many angels that he just assigns to do different duties. So don't think that anything's difficult for God because remember, nothing's impossible for God. But I, I firmly believe that there are some prayers that are more effective than others. And that's why the Bible says in James that the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. And in context, that was talking about Elijah. And you saw it with Elijah, 
although Elijah decreed and declared that there was not going to be any rain in the, in the reign of Ahab, when God had finally sent him to go back and to confront the king, the wicked king of Israel and Jezebel, after, after slaughtering those false prophets, do you see that he went, I believe, was onto a mountain, and then he had his servant with him, and then he started to pray that there would come some rain, finally, according to the word of the Lord. And he kept on praying. It didn't happen straight away. He, he told his servant to go back seven times. He said, go back. The servant came back. He said, there's, not, there's nothing. No rain's coming. He said, go back again. He came back. There, nothing happened. It was only until the seventh time that the servant then saw uh, a cloud. And eventually that cloud, it became monumentally large. And then there was a great amount of great torrential rain that came upon it upon the land of israel so elijah himself a mighty man of god who had who had seen great miracles who had seen fire come down from heaven he was persistent he was persistent in his prayer and it was his persistence that produced results you see the enemy wants us to pray once to pray twice to pray three times Nothing changes in a week. Nothing changes in a month. Nothing even changes in a year. And do you know what he says? He says, give up. Your God doesn't listen. Your God doesn't care. Who is your God? Isn't that what happened to Hannah? When that wife was, that woman, um, the second wife of, of Hannah's husband, she was afflicting him and, and taunting her, her and telling her, you know, God is not going to answer you. God is not going to give you a child. That's how the devil comes. He knows that God will eventually listen to you. So that's why he's trying to discourage you from praying. We can't, we cannot afford to give up our prayer life. Prayer is, I believe, the most important thing. That's what Christ was doing in the wilderness. That's what gave him such tremendous power. Now, Christ also coupled that prayer with fasting when he was in the wilderness for 40 days. So when we, we combine the two, we're even more powerful. But prayer was actually the key ingredient to what made Jesus Christ's ministry so powerful. And we find from the days of Jesus Christ, the apostle Paul and Peter and all of the other generals who have come in the last 2,000 years, if there is one thing that they said was important, all of them would agree and say it was prayer. Now, focus is definitely important as well. We need to have focus but let's have focused prayer, specific prayer. But that's, that's another message because that would take another time. That would take a lot more time. But I want to focus today on persistence in prayer. Um, persistence in prayer. So again, reading from Matthew 7, um, it says, For every one of you that, re that asks receives, and he that asks, he that seeks finds, and to him that knocks, it shall be opened unto you. Amen. Amen. If we go on to Luke chapter 18, we have another parable from Jesus about the importance of being persistent, not giving up. There's so much that God wants to give us. There's so much, but it's infringing upon or it's, it's dependent upon our prayer. Um, reading from verses 1, this is Luke chapter 18. And it says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying there was in their city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, avenge me of mine enemy, of my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, though I fear not God, nor, rem nor regard man, Yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear with them long? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. Now, a lot of the things that we want in prayer there, there is an enemy that is withstanding those things. Uh, I gave the example of Daniel before in Daniel chapter 10, where it said that he'd been praying to God. He'd been fasting because he wanted a revelation. He wanted to find out when the children of Israel were going to be freed from their captivity and when they could return back to Jerusalem. Uh, this, is, this is Daniel in the, in the times of Nebuchadnezzar. And what we found in that story is that, that there was an angel that, had been sent by God straight away. The moment that Daniel started to pray, God had already sent an answer. 
But what happened is that there was opposition. The prince of Persia withstood the angel that God had sent. So when we pray to God for, for specific things, so long we're living in righteousness, so long we, we put on Jesus and we have the faith in Jesus, we receive the Holy Spirit and we are Christians, we're walking in the Spirit. When we pray to God, God will almost want to send those things immediately. Why not? He said that, here it said that we'll... Will not God avenge his elect speedily? So God wants to respond speedily. But what is, is um, obstructing God's movement is the enemy, is, is Satan. So what we need to do is be persistent so that God can avenge our enemies. And God will avenge our enemies. God will avenge our enemies. Because he said that if this judge who doesn't care about man and he's, he's not fearful of God, if he will listen to this woman, to this widow because of her persistence, then how much more would your heavenly father listen to us, his, his children, when we are persistent? He will listen to us. He, the Bible says he will avenge us speedily. I'm telling you, there are enemies that are before you. So many times we, put the, we point the finger at God, but there are enemies out there. Not only, not only spirits, but they're also wicked people as well that do things, they, that, that rely upon witchcraft, that rely upon different means of sorcery, different spiritual means in order to prevent us being promoted, in order to prevent us from moving in success. In order to, to prevent us, you know, when you look at, you know, for instance, you find, um, let me give you some common examples. So let's say somebody's been praying for, for marriage, a woman's been praying for marriage and she's getting older. And she's fearful that uh, um, that maybe she's not going to find the right person and she's not going to have children because she's getting old. There's something spiritual behind that. It's, it's not something natural. It's some, there's something certainly spiritual behind that. Or if somebody's going through um, an issue of poverty and uh, every single time they, they're getting rejected from jobs, um, they're dealing with, with being lazy, they just can't really get the appropriate job and therefore they're, they're running out of money all the time, then that's something spiritual as well. There is a spirit behind that. There, there are spirits behind everything. Me coming on tonight, this is a spiritual thing. It's not, it's not of my own strength. It's, it's the spirit of the Lord, which I believe has compelled me, has, 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 uh, has stirred me to come on tonight. And anything that anybody does is compelled by spirit. So what we need to understand is that we need to deal with this spiritually and no greater way can we deal with things than uh, spiritually than by prayer because prayer is something very spiritual. That's why you need to have faith to pray. It's, it's clearly something spiritual because when, we're, when I'm praying and I'm being persistent, you know what I'm doing? I'm saying to myself that I can't get this result myself. I need to rely and depend upon somebody. Hey, good evening. God bless you. Please share if you can tonight. Please share. Um, I need to pray to somebody who's greater than me, somebody who is bigger than me. And my faith is in God. I don't put faith in myself. I say, God, you know, you're, you're all knowing. You're better than me. You're greater than me. You're smarter than me. You see everything that's going on that I can't see. Remember, the spiritual world is an unseen realm. It's an unseen realm. We get the opportunity to tap into it when we're praying, when we start seeing visions, if, if we're lucky enough to go into trances, when we go to sleep and we have dreams, we're, we're tapping into that spiritual realm. But the spiritual realm is always all, all around us and God sees all of that. God has perfect knowledge of everything that's happening. So we, we put our trust in him and that's why we pray. Prayer is an act of humility. And remember, God says that God gives extra grace to the humble he, he puts down the proud. Remember, the proud don't pray. And we can get that actually in Job, Job chapter 21. The proud don't pray. Um, Job 21 um, from verses 13. It says, they spend their days in wealth and in a moment go down to the grave. Therefore, they say unto God, depart from us. For we desire not the knowledge of thy ways. What is the Almighty that we should serve him? And what profit should we have if we pray unto him? So there's people in the world that they say, what's the point of praying to God? But we in the body of Christ, we know that prayer is what truly gives us power. And I mean, with persistence in prayer, let me say also being persistent, speaking in tongues. Now, I don't really want to give a specific time 
of how long we should pray. Um, it's just down to your own, you know, your own relationship with the Lord. But I think five minutes is not enough. Um, I think that if we can set a specific time during the day where we know that we can actually spend in the presence of the Lord, then we need to we need to put a specific amount of time. Now, the Spirit of God can lead you. The Spirit of the Lord will tell you, okay, that's enough. Maybe you prayed for 20 minutes and the Lord will say, that's enough. Do this now. But there's sometimes I find in my life that you need to pray for a long time, 30 minutes, one hour. Um, and as you get deeper and deeper into the prayer, that's when you start to feel the anointing. Originally, when you start praying in the first few minutes, you might not feel anything. You're going to get discouraged. There's going to be a lot of opposition. The enemy really doesn't want you to pray. And when I'm talking about the enemy, I'm talking about spirits. I'm talking about familiar spirits. Amen. One hour, exactly. I believe one hour is, is minimum because that's what happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus said to, um, to John, James and uh, Peter, he said, remember, he was praying before he was betrayed and they started to fall asleep. And he said, could you not pray with me one hour? So I think one hour is, it should be a minimum in terms of, in terms of we should have one hour where we just pray nonstop and we pray in tongues, we pray in that unknown language so that we edify ourselves and um you know as you go as you go on you may want to feel led to pray in english as well so you can get an interpretation maybe of those tongues but as you go on as you keep praying in the spirit you're going to feel fire eventually on the altar that fire is the angel of the lord coming the angel of the lord will come the angel of the lord will start showing you visions today um i was praying and then i saw a vision of of a school and it's because I'm, I've, I've applied for a school for for um for a course at a university and um usually i pray around that time at 3 p.m and i could because i saw that vision i knew that they, i must have received like an email so i went on my email address i stopped praying i went on my email address and i needed to do something quickly and that's what happens when you pray god god starts to give you instructions something as small as that god gave me an instruction on that i knew i had to move and um with so many times we think oh god is not really speaking to us as much as we would like but it's a lack of prayer because prayer is communication even when we're praying in tongues we don't know it our spirit is praying to god when we're praying in tongues it's our spirit man or it's the spirit god spirit of god ministering through our spirit man praying to the almighty the bible says we speak in mysteries when we're praying in tongues we speak in mysteries so we need to be persistent in that um, I've got a good example of this, um, or a couple good examples of, of, of spending time, a significant amount of time in prayer. We could go to Luke chapter, I believe it's six. Yeah, Luke chapter six from verses 12, and this is talking about our Lord Jesus. It says, and it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. Now, Jesus wouldn't have prayed all night unless it was necessary, but the Spirit of God led him to pray all night. It was necessary. And in verse 13, and he said, And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose twelve. So the reason why he was praying all night is because he needed revelation about the twelve disciples that God wanted to choose. Could it be that we want revelation about particular relationships with the, the type of friends that we want to be around or the type of person, the spouse that we should get married to? Or, the, or even we need a revelation of the ministry. We need a revelation of where God wants us to work, where God wants us to be, what God wants us to do, because God has a perfect will for all of our lives. There's a book written in heaven about all of our lives and God wants that to be fulfilled in our lives. When things don't go well in people's lives because they're not walking in accordance to God's will for the, the God's perfect will for their lives. But you see here, Jesus prayed all night and there was tangible fruit, there was tangible good results that came as a consequence of his persistence in that he chose the disciples that God wanted. So sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, we may not have time sometimes, we have to go to work sometimes, but sometimes we need to be really persistent in prayer. Sometimes we have to go deep into the night. And I'm telling you, God will definitely show you something. Don't think that what you sow, you will not reap. If you sow in prayer, God will reap, will give you even more than you bargained. Just from one hour of prayer. Sometimes it may not seem like doors are being opened, but I'm telling you, sometimes it takes things to, um, when there's a change in the spiritual realm, sometimes it takes time for it to manifest in the physical. And like I said, when we're praying, we're in, we're, especially when we're praying in tongues, we're, we're, we're changing things in the spiritual realm. 
We're changing things in the spiritual realm. God made that promise to Abraham when he was 75 and showed him that vision of the stars. But it was another 25 years until that came to pass in the natural realm. But Abraham was a prayerful man. Abraham was a very prayerful man. Another example that we could um, look to in terms of somebody who learned about the persistence of prayer is, um, is in Genesis. I think it's Genesis... Uh, don't let me guess. I think maybe 32. Um... Yeah, Genesis chapter 32, and this is talking about Jacob. So remember, Jacob um, Jacob was a twin, a younger twin of, of Esau. Um, he's the son of Isaac and Rebekah and the grandson of Abraham. And at this stage now, he's fled from, from his home because he's taken uh, uh, Esau's birthright and Esau wanted to kill him. So now at this stage, he's going to go back to um to the land where Esau was and obviously he's understandably he's very very fearful so what he does is he, he he separates himself from his family at this stage now I think he's got 12 boys he's got a girl he's got two wives you know he's got a big family and he separates himself from all of them sometimes that's what we need to do sometimes corporate prayer is important and it's effective remember the day of Pentecost they, there were 120 of them in the upper room they were all praying corporately and the corporate prayer can can produce tremendous results but sometimes we need to be alone with God by ourselves. And that's what Jacob did here. He separated himself from them. And um, so Genesis 32 from verses 24, it says, And Jacob was left alone. And there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh. And the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, let me go for the day breaks. And this is Jacob speaking. He said, I will not let you go except you bless me. And he said unto him, this is the man wrestling with Jacob. He said, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thou name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and with men. And I've prevailed. You know, I'm so happy I've come back to this scripture because I'm getting, um, you know, I'm just getting revelation and just getting, um, just remembering how important it is to pray. Because Jacob said there that he was not going to let that man go. And, and that's persistence. He said that I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And that's the point of prayer. We, we say to God, I'm not going to let you go, God, until you bless me. I'm not going to, I'm just going to keep praying. If it's the last thing I do, and this earth, let it be prayer. I don't mind. If I die in my prayer, I don't mind. At least I tried. <laughs> but I'm just going to keep trying. You know, I'm going to put my faith in you and I'm going to keep trying. And it said that because of that, the man actually the man actually wanted to give up. The man said, you know, you can have what you want. It's fine. You, you can be blessed. Now you're going to be blessed. But not only did he do that, not only did he bless Jacob, but here's what's more important. He changed his name. He changed his identity. And the name that he gave him is very significant. He called him Israel. And he gave the re he gave the meaning of Israel. Hey, he said that as a prince, you have power with God and with man. You see, power, true power comes through prayer. He said, but not only with God, not only will we receive power with God, but we receive power with men. If we want to go out there and win souls, we need to have power. That's how Jesus won souls, through power. But you see, Jesus understood. He, he received that revelation from Jacob. I believe that when he was there all night, because remember Jesus was somebody who, who knew the scriptures very well. I believe that Jesus was probably was reminded of what Jacob did all night in that Jacob wrestled all night. So he said, Jesus said, let me wrestle all night and I'm going to, I'm going to produce similar results. Remember these things, the, remember the Bible says that these things in the scriptures, they're written for our admonition. They're written for us. They're written as in samples. They're written for our encouragement that a man of God may be, or a woman of God may be thoroughly furnished unto every good work. So this scripture is for us even tonight. God is teaching us if we get to a place where we're wrestling and sometimes it will feel like wrestling because sometimes I'm in prayer and I can feel, I can physically feel a position. I can, so, sometimes I'll be in prayer, I can feel like there's a hand on my back I can feel physical things and I can't see it, but it's there. This stuff is real, but I have to just keep going. I keep wrestling. I keep worshiping. Sometimes in worship, I'm singing. 
you know, to the Lord. And I feel opposition, but I keep going. And eventually there's a shift. You know that shift, and you've felt it in church. There's, or if you've even felt it in the secret place. There's a shift in the atmosphere. Something changes. That's because of your resilience in the secret place. Amen. So I think um, maybe there's one more scripture I want to give us tonight. Um, and that's from Galatians. Just to encourage you to keep going in the secret place. And I'm telling you that that breakthrough is going to come. That answered prayer is going to come. Sometimes you have to wait years. You know, sometimes you have to wait years. But we can, we can shorten that waiting, I believe, if we pray. If we pray every day about the same thing. If it's a spouse you want, keep praying. Keep praying. You want a spouse? God, I need a spouse. God, I need a spouse. You said in your word, it's not good for man to be alone. Get the scriptures. Show the Lord the scripture. Remember, God is a judge. But God's law book is the Bible. God's law book is the Bible. So quote from the Bible. Say, Father, it is written. You said this. Remember, there's an adversary in the law court. That's the enemy, Satan. He knows the book as well. But, so we need to know it too. So Galatians 6, um, verses 9, and it says, Let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So let's not be tired of praying. Let's actually get to a place where we enjoy it. Because eventually, I'm telling you, when you start seeing results, you're going to enjoy it. When you start feeling the presence of God because of your prayers, you're going to enjoy it. So let's get to a place where we enjoy it. And eventually, it won't just be a, a religious chore for us. And eventually, not only are you going to be blessed, but people around you are also going to be blessed as well. Naturally, it's not going to be a case of you having to, to strive to get people saved. Jesus didn't strive to get anybody saved. All he did is manifest what was happening in the secret place remember even jesus told the disciples he said that if you seek me in the secret place then i will bless you openly in the public place and that could refer also to ministry sometimes we want to bring about great change we want revival we want to see people saved added to the church and that's great but the effectiveness of that is going to be contingent upon what we do in the secret place so let's not be weary of doing it. And let's, I believe, let's make, you know, over all of us tonight, let's make the decision to say that, okay, I'm living my life for Jesus. I'm living my life for prayer, for persistent prayer. That's all I'm going to do for all my life. I may slip up a few times. We all do. I may, I may, I may not be able to keep up that intensity every day. You know, I, I make mistakes every day. But you know what? God has forgiven you through the blood. Just confess. Anytime you fall, you fall short, confess. God, remember, God is so merciful. God is very merciful. Confess your sins to him and keep praying. When you make a mistake, the devil will try and tell you, you can't pray. God is not going to listen to you. Um, remember Adam and Eve, after they sinned, they hid. They actually hid and they started to cover themselves. They hid in a tree and God was looking for them. You see, that's what God does to us. Even when we sin, it's like we try and hide from the face of God. But God is still looking for us. God still wants to commune with us. He still wants to spend time with us. He still wants us to pray. So let's, let's make the decision tonight to consecrate our lives entirely to prayer. And as we do that, we're going to see such great changes, not only in this year, for the rest of our lives, and also for the people that we come into contact with as well. So Father, we just thank you for this word. We thank you for your presence. And I thank you, Father, for everybody that's watching. I pray, Lord God, that you bless them, Father, that you, you increase them in every way. Father, that they will be a blessing, uh, that, they, that you will bless them so that they can be a blessing, Lord, to everybody they come into contact with, Father. Father, reignite their prayer life. Give them strength in the inner man, Lord God. A father sharpen their their sight their spiritual sight lord god and use them for your glory rest heavily upon them let your anointing your your power rest heavily upon them in the name of jesus christ i pray amen 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 good night guys thank you